Oi, 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 guys. Welcome back to Wes Life. Episode 20 now. Flip me. We are 20 episodes into this podcast. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. I do appreciate it loads. I appreciate all of your, um, well, kind of your input, your feedback and whatnot, and all the different things relating to this podcast. And let me tell you, it has been an amazing 20 episodes. That means 20 weeks since we started. Oh, my days. We are almost halfway into a year on this podcast. That is absolutely mental. But it has been a brilliant time. I've enjoyed doing it so much. And I think, I, yeah, I'm going to continue with this into the foreseeable future. And obviously, we're going to try and get more ideas go forward with different things and yeah this is going to be like the podcast hopefully is just going to become better and better like a pokemon it's just going to keep evolving like a pokemon oh yeah i hope so anyway oh man right it feels it feels like it's been a while since just um since i've just been chatting to you since i've sat down and just chatted on my own as a one to screen <laughs> I guess um, whoever's listening to this you can't really see my face I can't see yours but obviously if you are listening I hope you enjoy it but yeah I've got um, got some stuff planned for this episode I was as I was thinking I was like right I just want to sit down and just tell a bit of a story because you know I I can oft, often well quite regularly I, I waffle on like I just go over the top just talking about things I could just talk forever um I don't know if that's necessarily a good or bad thing, but I could just talk. I think in the terms of podcast, like making this, it is kind of good because even though I am just talking to myself, I feel like I am talking to someone and so I can just keep talking and talking and there's no like awkward pauses or anything unless I'm thinking about something. So I've got a story that I want to tell you today, but let's just jump straight into it with uh, where's where's where have I been? So I think, yeah, I've mentioned previously that I've, over Christmas time and New Year's and stuff like that, and been away over New Year's, what have I been doing since then, really? Um, to be honest, I've been really busy with uni. I've been getting a lot of uni work done, like, so much. Um, and I've still got loads that I need to do this week. Um, but I always find that I procrastinate all the time, and then I just do it last, like, minute or last week and stuff. But I'm going to get some more done later after I've finished recording this. So that's been a, a, bit, a bit of a hectic part of my life. Um, board games. I've got a lot of new board games that I've just been playing. I've, I've been going around Jack's house quite often. We're just playing board games together. And um, he's kind of like gotten into this, well, similar kind of state of mind where he just wants to get new games and play them. So he's been getting new games after playing them with me and stuff and I've been enjoying that. I've got, um, man, there's a new board game that I got recently called Robinson Crusoe. And oh my flip, it is a hefty game. Um, it is a brilliant game though. And I recommend it to anyone who loves meaty board games. But if you, if you want, um, a recommendation on a smaller type of game that I've recently got, there's a game that I do enjoy playing called Celestia. Um, if you've ever played any kind of games like ink and gold or diamonds where you it's kind of like a push your luck game it's similar to that where you're going along and you're trying to go further and further to get more points but it's also mixed with a bluffing game so you only can go further if the per the leader of the round has got the uh, the like necessary cards to go further but you don't know if they have or not so they can bluff and whatever it's pretty fun it's a good game so that's celestia i recommend that to anyone and then, uh, yeah, Robinson Crusoe, if you like big board games. So, yeah, I've been playing a load of board games. I've actually, um, yesterday, played my first D&D &D session of the year, which um, was pretty fun. But I've sadly lost my character sheet, and so I had to use the um, Dungeons & Dragons Beyond kind of thing and try and use my character sheet off there. So I need to get a new character sheet and try and remember what kind of stuff I had on my character. Um because i lost it and i don't know where it is so that's really sad so i'll find that um yeah i've been talking about um tom hanks and how much of a a great actor he is and stuff and how much i love him and 
Yeah, I've been watching a load of his films recently and stuff. So, I've... Wait, what films have I seen? Um, There's a few films that I watched recently that I didn't even know existed. Speaking about D&D, there was one called Mazes and Monsters, which is like, I think, one of the very first films that Tom Hanks did. Um, Very old film. It's a bit difficult to watch, actually, because of, like, how old it is, but it, it was an okay film. Um, and then I watched a film called uh, The Money Pit. Now, let me tell you, The Money Pit, if you've never seen that, oh my flip. I've not laughed so much at, like, a f comedy film like that in years. Like, I was, I was like, laughing so much, almost, like, to the point where I was choking on my laughter. It was, I was loving that film and loving the, the like, comedy parts of it and stuff. It was just amazing to me. Um, so that's The Money Pit with Tom Hanks. Highly recommend you go and watch that. And uh, I also watched The Terminal. The Terminal with Tom Hanks. That's a good film. Um, never even heard of that before. Which surprised me. Because it's a great film. Um, that's where Tom Hanks is stuck in an airport. Um, it's a really good film. actually recommend that to anyone. But yeah, I was actually... Um, speaking to my friend about it and we're talking about Tom Hank films and stuff and she's never actually seen Big and now if you've never seen Big I recommend you get off well right after this podcast if you are listening get off go and watch Big with Tom Hanks because oh my days that is like my favorite Tom Hanks film ever made um absolutely love it but she's never seen it so I um yeah I've I bought it on Amazon Prime and right i'm gonna have to watch it now so um hopefully she enjoys it because i've hyped it up <laughs> but yeah it's a great film big if you've never seen it so yeah i've been watching a lot of tom Hanks films i don't know why i just got into that kind of mood um what's your favorite tom Hanks film let me know in the comments below but right yeah let's jump into wes says now right this is the story that i want to tell you okay so if you've haven't figured out already the title of this video is probably going to be on the basis of this but i'm going to tell you a scary ooh, a spooky oh terrifying or maybe not terrifying but i'm going to tell you a bit of a creepy story um now this story involves camping let me just have a little sip of my tea you know every time i have a cup of my tea uh, a cup of tea not a cup of my tea i always feel like i'm on asmr so like oh i think that's probably disgusting for some of you to hear though I'll just try and drink it normally. Ah, that was nice. Does everyone ever do that? That ah, right after a sip. Doesn't matter what kind of liquid it is. If it's hot or cold, you just go ah. Could probably drink a cup of soup and be like ah every time. Let me just demonstrate that one more time. Ah, delicious. Right. Okay. So a bit of background. Right. When I was younger. Um, we had this kind of, these kind of cornfields behind our house, a bit like woods or whatever. And we used to, me and my mates for fun, we used to always go, go there all the time. And we'd, we'd do different things, like we'd play hide and seek in the cornfields, we'd play, um, man hunt, we'd play, um, tig, tag, whatever you call it. Um, and it was a good laugh. And then one year, my friend got a tent, and we thought, oh yeah, this is brilliant, right, we're gonna, let's go camping and stuff. So we, at first, we tested it out, We'd, we went in his back garden, we camped in there a few times, and he had a treehouse, and we set the tent up on the treehouse. First night we ever went camping in his back garden, actually, it was like a massive thunderstorm, and it, it was a two-man tent, and there was four of us in there. Originally, there was five, but... um. Yeah, my cousin was in and he was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. So he got out and left. So there's four of us in there and massive thunder, thunderstorm, lightning, everything. It was mental, but it was really fun. <laughs> and then, yeah, after a few weeks of that, we thought, right, we are going to make the plunge. We are going to go over to the cornfields and we are going to go camp over there. <laughs> so... That's what we did, and the first time we went, I think there was probably about four of us again. And it was absolutely stupid, because we camped in right in the middle of the field. So it was dead open, everyone could see you from all sides. 
And I just felt like an absolute numpty afterwards. I was like, why did we camp there? But we <laughs> we camped there probably twice. Oh, I've got hiccups now. I hope it doesn't carry on. <laughs> but, um... Sorry, by the way, guys. So I'm just trying to come over a bit of a cold recently. But, yeah, we, we, um... We used to go camping, like, all the time, and after a few weeks of... No, after... Yeah, it was probably only once or twice we camped in the open. We found this, like, little wooded area where, when we were a lot younger, we actually dug, like, a big trench there, which was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, we went camping over there, and... That area was... Yeah, it was pretty good, but... We'd probably go camping. Now, honestly, camping was part of my childhood. I pro we probably went camping nearly every weekend or every other weekend. We'd just always go camping, just always be talking about it. Like, oh, you're coming out camping? Yeah, let's go for it. It was mint. It was a great time. And um, at one point, my cousin got like a six-man tent or something like that, a family tent. And so we went over there, and this time, there was absolutely loads of us. There was about... There's probably about 10 or 12 of us, and it just got out of hand. I can't remember how old I was at this point. How old I was about, um, at this point. I was probably about 14 or 15. And there's loads of us camping, and we used to always make like a little campfire. Nothing too bad or anything. Just a little one. And then this one time, we just... Someone brought some mattresses over. Because they were like getting thrown out anyway. And they were like, let's throw them on the fire. And I was like, are you nuts? And they threw these mattresses on the fire. And this ma it just went massive. Like this little fire went to like a bonfire almost. And I was getting sick of it, me. And almost went home because I was just annoyed. I didn't know some of these people. But yeah, the next day, the, the little campsite was a mess. It was just rubbish everywhere. There was like mattress springs. And I just thought, our cute little site has been ruined look at it and it was just horrible and after that we just me and my mate never wanted to go back there so what we did was we found a new spot because we went around looking we found a new spot which was a bit of a trek down the hill like probably a big trek it was probably about a 15 to 20 minute walk um whereas usually we'd probably walk about 10 minutes so yeah it was a long walk and yeah this new spot we found it was quite enclosed um the, the trees all the way around it was a cute little area really nice but there was the way in was like you had to go through these like little woods and then there was like a little pathway and it was like massive kind of puddles like massive puddles probably like two foot deep puddles and you had to like tiptoe across the edge of this banking to get through pretty like mental to be honest and carrying all the camping equipment it was quite difficult to pull off yeah we do that and we went camping there a few times and to be honest it was quite scary a few times because there was a house not far from there and like a rope swing and stuff and oh man we just always like be hearing noises and stuff and we were always getting freaked out but we still kept going back there um this carried on for a few weeks to be honest <laughs> Now, this is kind of where the scurvy part comes in. And now, I watch these vid types of videos on YouTube quite often where they always do, like, animated horror stories or animated, um, I don't know, like, creepy stories and stuff. So, if you're an animator, and or if you want if you know an animator and you want to get them in contact with me, please do, because I'd love for this to be animated, because I think it's pretty good. And um, if you want someone else doing the narrating, you can do. I don't mind doing it. But... This is a true story now. Everything I've told you so far has been true. I'm not, I'm, I'm not lied. I don't lie. But this is going to be... I don't know. If you don't believe it, then I'm not going to try and convince you. But it is true. So anyway, the last time... Actually, this wasn't the last time we did go back. But one of the last times we ever went as a group, this scary story happened. So, normal day. We go over there. We go camping and stuff and we had two tents this time you know this was like one of the times where we upgraded and we we'd always bring two tents and stuff um and we brought two tents i think there was let me try and get this straight i think there was five of us there i'm pretty sure there was five of us i might be wrong there might have been four of us but i think there was five of us anyway we set up the tents we um we had some food, we eating food, 
we had a little campfire going and we were playing card games. We had a pack of cards. That's what we used to do for fun. We're playing card games around the fire. Really nice time. And so we're playing cards around the fire. Uh, <laughs> I'm just repeating myself. And everything was nice and it was it was quite dark at this time. I don't know. It was probably about 10 o'clock at night. It was quite dark. Um, we could only see like the light around the fire. Nothing else. You look and it's just trees. That was it. And so it was getting a bit cold. It was like, right, should we get in inside the te- tent and carry on playing? So what we'd always do anyway, we'd go into one tent and we'd always stay up chatting for a bit or just playing a game. And then when we were going to bed, then we'd go split off into the two tents. So we're in the one tent. We're all chatting. We're all having a nice time. And um, the wind is blowing. Not too bad, like, but it is blowing. And while we're sat there just chatting, I hear a noise coming from the other tent. I'm like, oh, that's funny. But... It didn't sound like a wind noise. It didn't sound like the wind was moving the tent or anything. Like, oh, what's going on out there? And then uh, I was like, ah, oh, no, it's probably nothing though. So I didn't say anything. So just carry on talking. A few minutes later, maybe it wasn't a few minutes later. It might have been a minute or two. Mm. I hear another noise again. So I'm like, hey, up. Oh, what's that noise? But I look at my mate and he looks directly at me. He's got this face of panic on. And he's like, did you hear that noise? I was like, yeah, did you hear it a minute ago? And he's like, yeah, but I didn't want to say anything in case it was nothing. I was like, flip me, me too. And then he was like, oh, we need to get out there and have a look. I'm like, flip me, maybe it's nothing, but it could be summer. And we're like, all of us. At this point, like, they were were panicking and going, oh, no, you're joking. There's nothing out there. You're just joking. I'm like, flip me, it's not. So my mate, he jumped out the tent, put his shoes on, and then he... um, he went looking and then he we're all sat there in the tent putting our shoes on and then we just hear him go hello are you all right mate are you all right i'm like oh he's just having us on and he's just joking and then next minute we hear this other voice come back saying oh yeah i'm just a bit lost and we're like oh crap so yeah we're probably about about age 15 at this point so we just all jump out the tent like oh crap so we look out, and I'm not even joking, as I jump out the tent, there's this middle-aged kind of man, he's probably about in his 30s I'd say, and he's, um, he might have been a bit younger, I don't know, but he, he had a brick in one hand and a metal pole in his other hand, like a pipe, and I was just, immediately as I saw him, I was just like, oh my flip, like what is going on, and he looked like he was drunk, he's like swaying all over place and everything and he's swaying his arms around and he stood behind the other tent and we're like oh crap what's going on and um talking to him and he's like oh i'm a bit lost i'm just a bit lost i don't know where i am i'm just wandered over here and then we're like oh flip and then we're, i was i was saying like oh man we shouldn't i don't know what to do in this situation but my mate was saying oh we'll take him to the bus station and I'm like, flip me, it's like a half an hour walk there. There's no way I'm walking all the way there and then coming back. Ridiculous. And he's like, no, no, I think we should take him. So, they, oh man, it was scary, but they was like, right, we're going to take him to the bus station. And so they, they quickly made the mind up, all right, we're going to take him. And I said to my mate, I was like, right. If we're taking him, because the they were all going, and I was like, I'm not staying here on my own, because they said they actually said that to me. I was like, if you don't want to go, we'll just stay here. And I was like, flip me, but no way, I would have stayed there on my own. But um, so I looked at my mate and I went, right, get your valuables out the tent then, because I don't know, this could be some kind of trap. And um, it was just like what? And I was like, I don't just do it. So we got our phones and wallets out of the tent, and then we just grabbed them and stuff. And then we went with them. And, um, by the way, that's happened a few times. I've always said, like, these weird things, like, oh, maybe it could be this, and then sold them to grab, grab whatever and stuff. And I don't know, kind of like a sixth sense, but not. But yeah, it was a bit weird. I just thought in my head, this is a trap or something. So we take him along and we're walking for a while. And you remember, I told you the way to get into this area, there's the only path we found was like one where there's like two foot puddles and you got to tiptoe around the banking. 
we get up to that point and then we're telling him and like right just be careful here mate there's some puddles and he's like you what and then we're like tiptoeing around the bank and he doesn't even realize he just walks straight in and he falls into this puddle and he's just like lied in the puddle like soaking wet and i'm laughing like pretty it was funny he just fell straight into this puddle proper yobbo like lied there in a puddle he still had his brick and stuff and i was like flip me this is scary um and so he's like getting up and stuff and he's like flip me there's a puddle there <laughs> like we didn't tell you we carry on walking getting into the wooded area and then next minute we hear someone shouting his name i can't remember what his name was but they were shouting his name and he was going i'm here i'm here these guys have got me i'm here and he's like where are you where are you and he's like i'm here and we're like crap what is going on and there was these two voices like echoing and we could hear him getting closer and closer and he's going these guys have got me and then they come over and there was these other two guys who were probably in like the mid 30s and um they were like oh cheers lads cheers we're just yeah he's a bit drunk and he wandered away from us we didn't know where he went and um he's going oh yeah we found him now cheers thanks for that you really helped us out and then they were like which way do we go here to get back home and they were, we were like just go that way and carry on walking and stuff and um then they were going oh shake my hands everyone shake my hands we love you for this so i don't know it was a bit weird shaking his hands and then um yeah they all wandered off and walked away and then it was like flip me that was bizarre that was weird as anything that they were like right let's go back so we were walk, walking back through tiptoeing around the banking you know as the usual get back and we're just walking to the campsite and i was just thinking we had like that was so dodgy something sort of like some something mad and i get back and as we get to the campsite and walk around the corner we're just looking the tent's gone and we're like crap the tents are gone well one of the tents was like um still pegged in i think they couldn't get it out because it was just like proper mighty pegged in but all the stuff and everything and the other tent was just completely gone and we're like oh man what has gone on and then like flipping i'm just stood there like well i'm glad i got my phone and my wallet <laughs> and my other mate was like flip me how did you how did you know that I was like, I don't know, mate. <coughs> I don't know, but I just I remember we rang up my uncle then because he only he just well he didn't live too far away, and we was like told him what happened, and he came over. He had these um, I can't remember it was like a Rottweiler kind of thing, kind of dog. Came over like proper fume, and he was like, and he was like, oh, if I see any guys, because we gave him a description of him, he's like, if I see up, I'm gonna set my dog on him and stuff. Um, don't know how that would have turned out, but he didn't find them actually and came back and um Yeah, you know, obviously we were all scared and stuff and terrified and um Yeah, it was just really weird and we actually he he helped us we looked around the whole wooded area and stuff because we felt safe when we was in it with ah, when we were with him because he's quite a big guy. Oh sorry, quite muscly and stuff and he was looking around with dog. And uh we did actually find the tent. It was stashed in some trees and stuff, and thankfully all the stuff was in it. So they didn't actually take anything because they just stashed it all in that tent, thrown it in um, some trees, and they thought, right, we'll um, come back for it later or stuff. And um, yeah, it was really it was bizarre because the tr the tent itself was actually stashed in a pretty. Yeah, it was like, I don't know how we managed to find it, to be honest, because it was mental. I was like, oh, how did, how did we find that? It was just, it was luckily, uh, well, luckily we did find it, but, um, yeah, I think, I think God must have been protecting me that night, even though, I, I think I probably was saved, only just been saved, like, recently, I don't, I can't remember, it was a long time ago now, but yeah, that was a terrifying night. Um, we didn't go back camping for probably about three years, and then uh, me and my mate just went back, and then um, we <laughs> we actually went there with this other guy because he was actually stopping around my house. So I was like, right, let's go camping instead because my house was quite um, 
well, there's a lot of bodies in the house. Well, not like dead bodies, but you know, I've got a lot of siblings and stuff. So it was like, right, we go camping, uh, we'll have more room and stuff. So we went over there, and then we started telling him this whole like <laughs> scary story, and we said, you know, that that was the last time we went camping. I think I only ever went camping there one time, and never went back. But it was it was pretty pretty scary, um, and it was all real. But I think what happened was. <laughs> Obviously, we had the fire there, didn't we? So I think that someone they must have been attracted to the lights around. And it's just weird thinking that we were playing card games around the fire, and they probably were watching us from a distance and stuff. And it was long grass around the area because you couldn't get to that, and like nobody could do any maintenance on that area. So long grass. I think they must have been in the grass just watching us, and then I think they must have seen us go in one tent and thought, right, let's go and. Nick the stuff out the other tent, and um, I don't know. That's I'm just assuming that's what happened. And when we got out, the two of them must have hid, and then one of them was obviously unlucky and didn't hide. Not not unlucky. I don't really believe in luck and stuff, but you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, it was scary. And being at that age, like fifteen, I probably was. Um, it was a scary time, and. Yeah, I've had loads of other times where I've camped out and it's been scary and stuff, but that was definitely the scariest, and I would not recommend it. <laughs> I don't know why I'd recommend it. Don't. I've I've been round there since the um the corn cornfields we call them. You just call them the cornies, and all oh my days it's changed a lot. And now there's like it's building like flats there and stuff. I think, and it's just sad really because I spent a lot of my time in my childhood there but I'm glad that I had all that time camping and stuff it was a good time and got a lot of memories but that is a scary one well, I've been a lot of other camping trips and stuff like road trips and camping and wild camping and a lot in Scotland and different things like that and mm. so camping is a bit, a bit of a big part of my life I guess but I'd love to go camping again soon to be honest because I'm not I think the last time I went camping was probably over a year ago now. Yeah, it must have been. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that story. That is, like I said, it's a true story. It it did happen. I think that would be a fun little one to be animated or something. You just animate like me, just being absolutely terrified, breaking it like, Oh, get your stuff out, Trent. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I just see these like little videos on... I don't know, on channels where they animate little scary stories and stuff, and I just think they're quite, um, yeah, they're just funny and stuff. Yeah, that's that. Um, right, that's Wes says, we're going to go into the Q&A now. I've not done a Q&A in absolutely ages. Let me get my fez. Let me get my fez. Here we go. This fez, I absolutely love this fez, because, you know what, it's a decent fez. When you think of fezes, you don't think of, like, quality fezzes but this one is hang on it says um lam lam rani Fre freres i don't know i'm probably butchering that 59 bab muli idris fez and like the inside it's like got some like um nice gold printing and stuff and it's turquoise and it just looks like it's royalty kind of fez it's not one of them cheap fezzes that cost like, I don't know, three three pound or something on Amazon and you get it and it's like bright red, like disgusting. It's a decent fez. Um if I ever do like a kind of a video with my face on it, you'd see what kind of fez it is because it's really nice. But yeah, I'm, I'll put it on now. I'm wearing it. Um speaking of videos with my face on it, that video of Shave Me Head, you've probably seen it. Flip me, look how many views that's got. Like, small channel this, not even 100 subscribers. And, like, flipping heck, it's got nearly 3,000 views, I think. Which has just blown my mind. But people want to see people shaving their heads, I guess. But yeah, right, jump into this Q&A, and I'm excited. So, we've not done this for a long time. Here we go, first question. Uh... Nobody's left a name, but it says, what does the Lord Jesus mean to you? Um, I think in like a quick summary, basically, Lord Jesus is my saviour. 
and he's given me a hope in life that you know I've just I've I've never had um I'd never be able to have without him and so I can live my life kind of you know excited to to leave this earth and you know we all we're all going to face death one day but I'm excited for that because I've got a hope in Christ and I know that he's I'm saved for him and that's what he means to me is the hope that I can have well he's given me a hope but yeah thanks for the question whoever sent that probably sent it a while back but yeah next question um no no name left for this one it says what's your favorite bible verse oh man you know what i've got loads of um loads of favorite verses and i'm off, i'm constantly thinking about um loads of different parts like you know i was actually chatting with a friend the other day <clears throat> um same friend actually who was talking about the tom hanks and big and stuff and i was saying like how amazing it is um reading through the old testament and stuff like that and there's so many great stories in the old testament and so much i love and yeah that's i'm not talking about favorite passage now but the old testament is brilliant by the way and some of my favorite passages are from there but my favorite bible verse <coughs> one that has always stayed with me through my whole time of being saved has been um john chapter 20 29 and it's um it's jesus speaking and uh he's actually ch um talking to doubting thomas you know the disciple thomas and um he says to him um i think it's like thomas because you have seen me you have believed um blessed are those who have not seen me and have yet uh yet have believed um and i think it's just a brilliant verse because that's always stuck to me and it's like the christian faith really is it's all about living by faith and not necessarily by sight and i just think it's just amazing to think that I can, we who have not seen christ in the physical sense i'm more blessed than thomas who was there with him and we're more blessed because we've not seen yet we still believe and i just think it's an amazing verse and i love it but yeah thanks to whoever um sent that question right next one um no response to left this it says why are you running that's why are you running now whoever sent that you're not educated are you because look at, well you can't even see me i'm not running if i was running right now i'd be out of breath you could pro probably not hear this sound pretty good and um i, pr I won't even be recording this actually if i was running like, i'm sat down recording it so whoever sent that finger i don't whoever sent this question i'm sorry but come on i'm not running so don't ask silly questions like that unless you want a silly answer actually that's not a silly answer that's an actual answer i'm not running so thanks whoever sent that actually no i'm not fa no thanks from me because it's a bit silly i'm not running right next question um this was sent by johnny richardson thanks johnny you are um a big support on this q a you always send a question like every time i'm doing one it says if you're on channel four come dine with me what would you cook oh man i actually love come down with me I just watch it all the time um i just found it really funny if i was on there cooking right for starters i'd probably do like um to be honest i just do food that i enjoy making like well i, I enjoy eating because I, I actually think if you are going to be making food just experiment if there's something you've never made and it's supposed to be difficult just go for it don't like say oh i can't do that that's too hard so I'd probably, for starters, I'd probably do some like, kind of, something to do with king prawns, because I love king prawns, that would be delicious, like, king prawns, like, um, in like a little, like, not necessarily a soup, but like a hot, kind of, some kind of something, I don't know, I'd probably like that, for my main, I'd probably, oh man, I'd probably do like some duck, with like, um, duck with like, Maybe some like really nice roast potatoes or some kind of really nice mash or something. Maybe, you know, like, I don't know if this is a thing, but you know when you get like a shepherd's pie and like the mashed potatoes on top, but when you put it in the oven, it cooks and it's dead crispy on top. 
that's really nice to me. Maybe I'd make a mash and like crisp it on top by cooking it in the oven. I don't know that that sounds nice to me. Um, I might do some vegetables with it. Maybe some like I don't know some greens. You want to get some greens on there, like some maybe some green beans or some. I don't know. Maybe some along them lines because that just sounds nice to me. And then for dessert, oh, what dessert would I make? Oh man, there's so many desserts I could probably be making. Probably want a nice refreshing dessert or something with that. Maybe like, um, I don't know, maybe like, oh, let me desserts. Like, there's a lot to choose from. Maybe I'd make like, um, actually, I know I keep changing my mind when I'm thinking of it. I don't know, maybe a trifle. I like trifles. I don't think many other people like trifles, but I wouldn't be making the food on there to try and win, win them over with food. I'd just be doing that because I enjoy it and um, trying to make a good night out of it. And I'd probably, afterwards, the entertainment and stuff, I'd be like, right, get a board game out. Come on, I'll teach you some board games because, you know, that'd be brilliant. But, um, oh man, what would I make for my dessert? Maybe a tiramisu because I like tiramisu. I don't know. Anyway, you get the picture get the idea but yeah thanks for that johnny and um hopefully if you was on a come down you know what actually get in contact johnny what we'll do is <coughs> sorry we'll have um a northwest <coughs> sorry i need i'm coughing a lot now mm. the tea's getting a bit cold we'll have a northwest come dine with me anyone who anybody want to get involved drop me a message I will do a little come down with me and the prize money. It's not going to be actual money. We'll probably, the prize can be like, um, I don't know, like an Amazon gift voucher. We all chip in a fiver each, whoever wants to get involved. And we'll actually do that. That would be mint. Um, if you want to do it, come and get involved. Message me. I'm down for that. Yeah, cheers, Johnny. Right, next question. No response. Don't know who left it, but it says, why did you shave your head? Short answer, because I felt like it. Um, longer answer, I've wanted to shave my head for a very long time, and I feel like her styles, I don't want to get older and look back on my life and be like, oh, look at that, I had the same boring hairstyle every single year. I want to try and go for different hairstyles all the time, so, you know, I've had longer, I've had shorter, I've had dreadlocks, I've had, um, I've bleached my hair, bleach blonde, I've had, um, lots of my hair, I've... You know, I've had like a man bun at times, I've, um, I've had curly hair, I've tried that a few times, pretty fun. I've, um, I've had, I don't know, I've shaved my head, I've had an undercut, I've just, I don't know, next, right, comment below, what, sh what should my hairstyle be, my next hairstyle, because I feel like, yeah, you've got to do it, you got to have a lot of hairstyles in life or experiment, because if you don't one day, you might regret it, and so that's the main reason, because I thought, I'd want to shave my head one day, see what it's like. And that's that. So, that's kind of why I've shaved my head. But yeah, short answer is, just felt like it. So, that's it. Um, yeah, I've not done it. I've probably wanted to shave my head for about, maybe over two years now. But, just certain things kept getting in the way of it. And now, I just got to a point where I was free and was able to do it. Yeah, right. Next question. Um, it is by, oh, it's actually from my sister. Matea, so thank you for that Matea. What's your favourite band or favourite musician? Uh, favourite band is probably Milky Chance, like, Milky Chance is brilliant. But actually, oh man, I'm torn actually because I do love Milky Chance, but Boniver is absolutely amazing and I've been listening to Boniver so much over the past year and... I just feel like there's like a connection on another level compared to yeah actually decided gonna go with Bonnie Ver even though Milk Chance is really good Bonnie Ver is my favorite band my favorite musician oh probably flip um man there's so many musicians and so many I listen to I mean gotta say Justin Vernon <laughs> because <laughs> the singer from Bonnie Ver because you know he's um yeah he's really good he's um yeah, he was actually, he did his own music for a while, and then he did, he had, he was in a band called Volcano Choir, which is, their music's really good too, and now he's in Bonnie Ver. 
Um, so yeah, maybe Justin Vernon. If I can't choose him, I would probably choose Ben Howard. I absolutely love Ben Howard's music. Um, not his newest album, but Ben Howard has always had a special place in my heart. So yeah, thanks for the question, Mateo. Right, next question. This is the last one, and then we will be done. Ah, so this is by Steve Foley. Thank you very much, Steve. It's great to know that you're actually what well listening the podcast. I'm thankful that you are, mate. It says, do you feel that programs or films with bad language, etc., can still have some kind of good moral or messages to them? And then he's also said underneath, I must say also that I found last week's podcast about worship very uplifting. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that, Steve. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Going on to that worship one real quick. I am going to revisit that. Hopefully, um, you know, I felt, yeah, I felt like, yeah, it's a good episode. Um, but for me personally, I don't, I want to try and go back into the worship question again. So I will be visiting that sometime in the near future. But yeah, films that have, um, bad language can have good moral messages. Yeah, I think definitely some films with, um, bad language, um, can have like good messages and morals to them i think almost any film can do that like um i don't i don't like obviously a film doesn't need to have bad language to be able to kind of portray a message and it doesn't have to have um pristine language it doesn't have to be like you know perfect um without anything wrong with it just so there's a good message to it i'm trying to think now if there's a film that comes to mind um because like almost every single film you watch these days like if it's a 12 or you know older it's gonna have at least (laughs) some kind of language in it that you know is bad um there's not a film that comes directly to my mind though if i had looked at this before and i probably could have thought of what um trying to think now um man this is I'm sure you guys could think of one at least, but yeah, I don't think, I don't, yeah, I think that they definitely could have, um, um, this is so hard for me to think of one, but yeah, and I think going back to that, I've been asked a similar question before about is it okay for Christians to be watching these kind of films and stuff, and I would go back to my answer that I've said for a while. If this is if it's a struggle for you, don't watch it. Like if it's something that you're going to struggle with, um, if language is something you struggle with, but you want to watch film, then I'd say just stay away from it. If it's a conscience thing, then yeah, stay away from it too. And um, I think going back to the worship episode last week, I said if if Christians wanted to, you know, be really holy and devout to God and strive to be more like him there's so much we would get rid of in our life we'd just get rid of loads and so i think films like that would be one that we'd get rid of but i don't think they are necessarily a bad thing i don't think they're wrong it's wrong and i I couldn't ever say oh you shouldn't watch it you're not allowed to but yeah hope you've got something from that steve anyway and thanks for that that is the end of the questions uh thank you very much to everyone who sent one um send me more uh, questions i'm going to leave a link in the description for more questions and now yeah wise words with wes if you want some wise words i am going to say i've probably said like this along these lines for a while or in a couple of episodes so i'm going to stick with it but yeah we're into the new year now and obviously people are going to be making big decisions hopefully this year's going to be um you know good one but obviously there are going to be hard times in this year they're going to be difficult things sad times and stuff and no year is going to be absolutely happy and perfect all the way through but i hope you um make the most of your time and honestly i'd say think about this last decade it's gone by absolutely well quick it's just flown by and I look back on my life in the last 10 years and thinking about this camping stuff, it doesn't feel like long long ago and I still remember all them things perfectly in my head, but it was absolutely ages ago and it's just flown by dead quick. 
And so this decade's going to fly by. And I know there's probably people in your life who were with you in this last decade and now are no longer with you. And, you know, we could, as we get into 2030, some of us probably won't be here. I might not even be here. I don't know where I'll be. Um, but if I'm not here and I have... Um, passed away and left this earth it won't be a sad time for me it'll actually be quite happy because i'll be joyful knowing that i'll be in heaven with christ um so i'd say make the most of your time but don't don't ever lose this thought of in your head that you could you could leave this earth at any moment um someone once told me that you should treat every single day of your life as the most important day of your life because it might be the last one that you ever get and i think that is really wise words and it's not my words but i would say definitely do that but think about your eternal life too i don't want to necessarily like scare you or anything but i became saved because i was you know thinking about that and if i were to leave this earth now it would be very happy for me um yeah, I hope, I hope you get something from that. Just don't don't put it off, guys. Just if you've not if you've not made Christ your saviour, um, really think about it and think about your eternal life and that kind of thing. And these ten years, like I said, we might not be around. But that's my wise words. That's been episode twenty. Thanks, guys, for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's probably been a bit of a long one, but I've enjoyed it. I'm going to continue with this podcast. Going to keep going forward. If there's anything you want to see, anything at all, let me know and I will try my best to incorporate uh, co- incorporate it. Is that it. Yeah, never mind. All right, guys, hope you've enjoyed. This has been Where's Life and I will see you all later. Hurrah.